Hello everyone. So pretty much after the reports of season four of Supergirl being a complete and total shit show because the writers have no idea what the fuck they're doing, I decided that I have a few ideas to fix Supergirl. It will be a series of videos chronicling this arc I have for Supergirl. I imagine it will be five seasons, but I'm going to be starting it from scratch pretty much. I'm going to be using a couple ideas and characters that were presented in Season 1 and use that as a jumping off point for my version of, the, of Supergirl. So let's get into it. First things first, I'm going to do something controversial. In this universe, Superman is dead. Yeah, I know, I know, let me explain though. Supergirl kind of exists in this weird bubble where she's not a sidekick, but she's still connected to the greatest superhero of all time. The other heroes in the Arrowverse don't really have this problem. Green Arrow, The Flash, Sealess, Time Traveling Justice League, and hell, even Black Lightning, even though he's not connected to the Arrowverse, but whatever, don't really need this extension or connection to a bigger hero. They're their own hero and can stand on their own two feet. We need to make that happen for Supergirl. She needs to be her own hero, but if you have Superman flying around, it kind of tarnishes it a bit. We need her at the forefront and not have the audience keep asking, hey, where's Superman? Because this is her show. While in the comics it's easy for Superman to come in and help out and cross over and stuff, but with our leading lady having a solo venture with next to no crossovers with Superman because of reasons, we can't have such a big superhero tarnish her development as a character. So in this universe, Superman is killed, maybe by Doomsday, maybe by Lex Luthor, which maybe explains why he's in prison, but Superman is dead. In the arc I have, he will remain dead. No teases, no nothing. Superman is dead. Deal with it. It would probably be better since the showrunners seem to hate Superman anyway, so it's perfect. The origin with Supergirl going into the Phantom, Phantom Zone and coming out many years later is still going to be the same. The first three episodes are going to be her origin story. As I said, her escaping Krypton is going to be the same with Kal-El heading to Earth and debris hitting her in space and her going into the Phantom Zone. Then many years later, she comes out of the Phantom Zone and is rocket, rocketed to Earth. Then you may ask, well, who's going to meet her when she lands on Earth? Well, nobody. She lands on Earth and has no idea what to do or where to go. I think this would add a layer of isolation, which I'll get into later. So she wanders from her pod, walking aimlessly along the outskirts of Midvale. She's eventually picked up by the Danvers and brought to their home. They recognize the House of L on her chest as the logo of Superman. She starts asking questions, and they tell her he died about a year ago. So she was too late. Not only did she fail to protect Kal-El, but now she has no idea what to do. So the Danvers adopt her and call her Linda. Also, there's no Alex either, by the way. Sorry, Kyler Lee, but I just want Kara slash Linda to feel as alone as possible. Have obstacles and fears and insecurity that she'll have to fight now, and eventually later on in life during her superhero career. She's alone. She's afraid. She wasn't there to protect Cal. She feels useless. Set up all these qualities about her that should turn her into someone like Batman, or worse, a villain. But it will be so much more triumphant to not make her sorrows define her and make the best of it, like Barry Allen. Mother killed in front of him and father taken to prison, and he is still super optimistic and a great hero. So the first episode, we'll just have Kara discovering her powers and fitting into Earth culture. Very basic. Think of the episode, the flashback episode, where uh, that Asian kid died and her and Alex try to figure it out. But, like, not exactly that, just that idea of like her being young and dealing with that you know next episode will be her all grown up but with another small change with her in college this will lead to another big change i do like M melissa benoist in the role but i think making her younger will benefit the character in the long run with this i think molly c quinn would be a good fit for the role i just think it would be more interesting to have her continually figuring out 
who she is in the world. She's living in a post-Superman world where she has all this power and not being able to use it, similar in the pilot of the actual show. But I want that to be expanded upon more, and that be more of a main obstacle she has to confront, which will be more difficult for another reason, but I'll get to that in a sec. So I imagine she could maybe be 20 years old, being on Earth for about 7 years. Also, her character will have a major personality change. She's not going to act like a 20-something year old with superpowers. She'll fit in just enough to not make people double-take, but she'll still act foreign to many things and act more like, you know, an outsider, an alien, like she's supposed to be. No way would it take a decade of li living in a foreign world and completely act like a normal 20-something. Well, moving on to the episode... She would be going to college in Metropolis and interning at the Daily Planet, purely to know Cal's human persona of Clark Kent, which she figured out earlier. She's not going to be interested in reporting in the slightest because she's her own character, not a gender-bent Clark Kent. Here, she meets Jimmy Olsen. No Lois Lane, maybe she moved away because of grief or something. I don't want to have a big, major Superman character like that on the show. Jimmy Olsen is big enough. He's not super big, but he's big enough. Similar to the show we got, we have Jimmy Olsen, but not played by McCod Brooks. No offense to him, but he's just not Jimmy Olsen to me. He's a good actor, but he's just too cool and charismatic to be Jimmy Olsen in my eyes. I understand he's matured at this point, but you could have him matured and serious, but still be a weird and nerdy geek. So we're recasting him and saving Brooks for another role. I think the perfect per person to play the part of a matured but still nerdy Jimmy Olsen is Billy Magnuson. He's a semi-known actor and I think he could play the part very well, as well as pulling off both comedy and drama. He's been in stuff like Game Night, which was a straight up comedy, but, but he's also been in more serious things like Maniac. I would imagine this Jimmy would be in his mid-thirties, be more of a mentor to Kara rather than a bestie slash love interest. I did consider making Jeremy Jordan Jimmy Olsen, since Wynn is literally just Jimmy Olsen in terms of personality, but I wanted to save Wynn for something else later on, possibly. Maybe make him a neighbor who's a little bit older or something like that, more of a family friend or surrogate brother, but downplay the nerdy aspects and make him more balanced and level-headed. Sorry that I keep going off the story, but I need to introduce my characters. So, Olsen is mentoring her about the planet, as well as telling her about Clark in their off time, and who he was and how important he was for the planet. While she go does get to know more about her cousin, she's still saddened by how great he was at everything. Another great bit for her character. Hearing how great and amazing Cal was and just making that shadow over her bigger and bigger, thinking, thinking she's more insignificant when that's not the case. So right after this, a threat happens. Could be a bank robbery or just a very simple threat. But the perpetrator will be a metahuman, would be someone super, super obscure like the Lightning Master. Yes, that is a real villain. Look it up. So, Jimmy goes off to take pictures, report, or whatever he does now, and Linda is looking at the robbery, recently having all these stories of Clark in her head about how amazing she, he was. She gets somewhat selfish and wants to show him up. So, she grabs something and ties it around her face, grabs her jacket, ties it around her waist. We could have it so that she is wearing a blue t-shirt and her jacket is red, so it looks like the classic blue and red outfit. She goes down and stops the Lightning Master with ease, but kind of reveals herself to the world a bit. And because of this, runs away. She hasn't practiced flying yet, so she can't do that just yet. We see that Jimmy saw the whole thing through his camera or something. He confronts her about it, but she denies it. He then reveals that he knew Clark was Superman and that she is related to him in some way, kind of similar in the original show. So then she reveals herself to him, kind of similar in the way Carl revealed herself to Win in the pilot, but not in terms of flying, but she can't because she can't do that yet. Maybe use her heat vision, which is red, by the way, not blue, because that's fucking stupid. Jimmy then tells her he will talk about this later with her, somewhat aggravated. She leaves and heads back to her apartment that she maybe shares with Win. So Linda is at a shitty point right now. She revealed her powers to the world in a selfish way to one-up Clark. 
Nobody is really on her side right now, and she's been beginning to feel more isolated right now. Revert back to this feeling she had when she first arrived on Earth. She keeps getting calls from Olsen, but she ignores them, feeling too shitty to answer his calls. She sleeps it off, but has a nightmare about being alone and scared. She wakes up at night and sees a fire in the distance. She has to convince herself not to help those people. She's been surrounded by tragedy her entire life and did nothing about it. This is almost a card that doesn't feel the need to help people because unlike in the actual show we got, she's struggling on what to do. On a moral field, she sh should she help them and risk more people seeing her or should she leave them to die? She decides to save them with a news channel seeing her feat of saving people, and the episode ends with her being fully revealed to the world, similar with the airplane rescue in the pilot. In the final episode of the Origin Trilogy, she is laying on her bed with a big smile on her face. She did something good, but not because to one-up Cal, but to do something right, and it felt great. She looks at her phone and Jimmy is calling her, and she goes to talk with him at his apartment. They begin talking about Clark and Cal and Superman. Linda reveals everything, feeling a trust with Jimmy, something that was established a bit earlier on, by the way. After everything is said and done, Jimmy asks what Linda is going to do now, and that she, she kind of has to become the new hero of Metropolis, even though, in reality, when thinking about it, she's really not ready for. But Jimmy calms her down. Eventually, throughout the episode, she gets a suit, which is not as drab and boring as the one on the show, and she starts saving people. But with this and I thought it would be an interesting idea to put in the show, is that because of Superman's death, people might not welcome her with open arms. Maybe alluding to an alternate type of reign of the Superman where many people claim to be Superman only to hurt people. Not saying that exact storyline happened, but something along the lines of Cyborg Superman or an evil eradicator. Or you could have it be that countless villains who realized Superman was dead and took advantage of that. Or wondering where this girl was when he died. Why didn't she save people before? Why now? So many questions regarding Supergirl emergence. Very similar to Superman's portrayal in the DCEU, but a bit more fleshed out and not as vague. She isn't going to be well loved in a world where Superman hasn't existed for almost a decade. I just thought those themes would be interesting. That the episode would be about her controlling her powers and learning to fly which she actually can't do and won't be able to for the next couple of episodes. Maybe have a little Pink Floyd moment? No? Okay. Episode ends with her officially starting her superhero career. Plus, a familiar face would be watching her from the shadows, which we would then later be revealed to be Martian Manhunter in the next couple of episodes. So I wanted to flesh out the origin of Supergirl into three episodes rather than just one. First episode would be her arriving here and learning about the world that Superman left, learning to fit into that society, and feeling alone. The second episode would be her in the then-present day. She's trying to learn more about Clark, befriending Jimmy Olsen, further learning about this world, making the ultimate decision about becoming a hero, and what that really means. The third episode would have her figuring out what to do, being more optimistic, and realize that she isn't alone anymore, trying to overcome her dark past and be better than it, all, all while saving people and becoming the legacy of Superman, but also trying to be her own hero which is more so an arc for the rest of the show. Next part, I will be explaining what the rest of the season will look like. I didn't intend for this to be so long, but I felt like I could have expanded on, upon her origin, because I felt like it would be important to know specifics about her origin, making it more layered, you know? So I'll explain the rest of the season in the next one or two videos.